Good morning and welcome to the One Service Hope in the Waiting. It's great that you're joining us here in Congleton Parish for our all-age worship. My name is Nick. I'm the Children and Families Missioner here in Congleton. It's great that we can be family together, even in our own homes, that we get to come and worship together. I hope and pray that you've had a good week. Um, but we get now to spend some time with God, to reflect on what the Bible might teach us, to praise and worship and sing together, to give God uh, glory for who he is, but also to think about how our lives can be changed and transformed by him and how we can change and transform other people's lives because of it. Uh, for this week's creative prayer, you might want a watch or a stopwatch, but it's not necessary. Everything will be on screen. We're going to do something a little bit different this week and have some responses coming up on screen for you to use as we think about waiting. Uh, but as we begin our service, let's just pray together and give this time to God. Daddy God, we thank you that we get to worship you. We thank you that we get to learn from you, that we get to explore your Bible, the word of truth that you've given us. We pray that this morning, no matter what our weeks have been like, no matter what our day is going like so far, that you'll help us to just put everything aside to be able to focus on this time together and to focus on you. Help us to hear what you want to say to us, even though it might be different for every single person. And help us to just uh, be open to what you might do through us as well in our families and with our friends and in our communities. We ask this in your name. Amen. OK, well, we're going to have the lighting of our second Advent candle now. And so we come to light our second Advent candle, the candle of peace. If you could respond with the words as they come on screen. In a world of war violence and abuse, where families live in shelters and children grow up in fear. God, we call upon you to come. In a world where peace seems to be so far away, we call upon you, Prince of Peace, to come. In this season of Advent, we wait for the coming of peace into our world. We await the birth of Emmanuel, God with us who comes into our lives in a new way. Come, Messiah, come and save us. And we join in with the words of the prayer. Dear God, we pray for the peace that only you can bring through your Son, Jesus Christ. May we walk in the paths of peace. Amen. We're going to sing uh, our first song today, which is our action song, so we're going to be dancing as well. And we're going to be singing and dancing to This Little Light of Mine. Let's worship God together. Here we go.
Well, we're going to uh, have a quiz now, and so uh, we're going to have some pictures coming up on screen. And your job is to guess what they represent people waiting for. So we wait for all sorts of things, don't we? Um, and for different lengths of time as well. So your job is to guess what are they waiting for. I think this this time is probably a pretty easy quiz and you might get 100%. But see how you do and have fun and I'll see you afterwards. Here we go. So how did you get on with the quiz? Did you get everything right? Did you make any mistakes? Um, hopefully you did pretty well this week. Um, and of course, one of those is uh, the advent calendar. And of course we're in advent now, that's why we've been lighting our candles as we're counting down and waiting to celebrate Christmas Day. Uh, right, well this week our Bible reading is from the Open the Book team again. And it's a story all about waiting. It's the story of Abraham and Sarah. So sit back and enjoy our Bible as uh, read to us or led to us by the Open the Book team, Abraham and Sarah. Here we go. Do you remember Noah and how God asked him to build an ark and put in it his family and lots of creatures to save them from the flood? God needed people to help him make the world beautiful and good again and listen to him. So he found Abraham. He wasn't special, he wasn't a hero, he was ordinary, like you and me. He made mistakes, like you and me. Abraham lived with his wife, Sarah, and his family in a place called Haran. Abraham was quite happy there, but God had other plans, and God spoke to him. I want you to leave Haran. I want you to be head of a new family, my family, and I will give you a country to live in and make you into a great nation. I will bless you and you must be a blessing to all you meet. Abraham was surprised, I expect. He'd hoped God was right. So when God called him to gather up his wife and his nephew, all their animals and servants, and travel a long way to a country called Canaan, he did. There was a problem though, because God had said to Abraham, would be head of a new family. You see, Abraham and Sarah didn't have any children. They wanted children, but hadn't had any, and they had been married a long time. Many years later, Sarah was giving up all hope of having a baby. In fact, she was getting very old to have a baby. Then, one day, Abraham was having a nap when some strangers approached him. What Abraham didn't know was the strangers were messengers from God, because in the Bible we are told, the Lord appeared to Abraham. It was very important to offer strangers and travellers hospitality in those days. So Abraham jumped up. Oh please, come and sit and have a wash your feet. They must be tired and sore after your journey. Now I shall get you something to eat as well.
so he and Sarah set to work. Sarah made lots of cakes, and Abraham and his servant roasted a calf, fetched buckets of milk. When all was ready, the meal was put in front of the guests. Abraham didn't eat, and Sarah stayed in the kitchen. One of the strangers asked, Where is Sarah? In the kitchen. We'll be back in a year's time. And then, by then, Sarah will have a baby. Sarah was listening to all this. She must have thought, is this ever going to happen? She said to herself, I hope you would have a child, but I have waited a long, long time. I really hope it happens and I have a son, but I'm old and the thought of it makes me want to, well, half. <laughs> Then God asked Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Is giving her a child too wonderful for God? Sarah was frightened because this, this stranger knew all about her. I didn't laugh. Oh yes you did. After that, God and his companions set off on their way. Sarah thought about what they had said and began to hope. And she waited and she was probably excited. Then, after waiting another year, their baby was born and they called him Isaac, which means laughter. Because if you remember, Sarah laughed. And I expect Abraham laughed and God had a chuckle too. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to sing and worship together again with the song Only a Holy God. So let's just open up our hearts and our minds to think about who God is, what he's done, what we've been told about him, what we might have read about him in the Bible, and just use this song as a way to just say thank you to him, to praise him, and to remind ourselves how amazing God really is. Let's sing Only a Holy God.
So this week's theme is all about hope in the waiting. As we think about looking forward to Christmas, we think about waiting, we've got Advent, we've got presents that we're waiting for, we might be hanging our stockings up hoping that uh, Santa might arrive, we might be waiting for the, the time when we can see friends and family, that little window of time where we get to see people again uh, without the tier restrictions in place. And of course we hope and pray within that that people stay safe as well. But we wait for all sorts of things. We wait for the doctor, we wait for our parcels to arrive, we wait for a phone call, we wait for all sorts of things. And sometimes that waiting can be really hard. And this morning I just wanna think about three things that help us think about how we can have hope in the waiting, how we can make the waiting worth it. Um, just like Abraham and Sarah, they had to wait a long, long time for Isaac to be born. They were given a promise by God uh, over 25 years before Isaac turned up. That's a long time to wait. I don't know if you had to wait for the next Christmas, how you'd cope if that was 25 years away, or your next birthday celebration, or the next time you got to see maybe a friend or a family member. Um, so we're gonna think about three short points about how waiting can be beneficial for us, and uh, then think a little bit about hope as well. So the first one is this, that waiting helps us appreciate what's on its way. So as we look forward to Christmas, actually, as we think about what Christmas is all about, it's not just about the presents, it's not just about the Christmas tree, it's about Jesus coming down. And it helps us to think and, and spend that Advent time, that waiting time, thinking about who it is that's on the way, who it is that we're celebrating the journey of from heaven to earth, from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be born in that stable, and from Bethlehem to the cross, and from the cross to heaven. It's a time for us to think about uh, every step of the journey, every day, every step of that journey on the way, what it is we're hoping for and waiting for. So as we go towards Christmas, uh, let's use that time to remind ourselves to, as you open your Advent calendar maybe, as you light your Advent candle if you've got one that's burning down, as you see things on Facebook or on YouTube, as we have the Where's Mary journey going around on Facebook, use that time to remind ourselves that actually as we're waiting, it's not about the waiting, it's about what we're hoping for to arrive that's important. We're waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the saviour, the one that God promised. So waiting helps us appreciate what's on its way. Secondly, waiting helps us prepare. Now one of the pictures earlier was um, of a pregnancy test, of that waiting for the baby to be born. And in the nine months that we're waiting for that baby to arrive, we spend time getting ready. We might read books. We might go to um, uh, antenatal classes. We might decorate a room and start getting things like prams and clothes and all sorts of other things ready. We start mentally preparing ourselves. Not that I think you can mentally prepare yourself at all for it. And at Christmas time, we start preparing our houses as well. We put up our Christmas trees. We start buying presents as a way of showing each other that we love each other, but also reminding ourselves of the gift that God gives in Jesus. We wrap them, we put up decorations, we buy food in, we prepare our homes uh, in that space. But at Christmas, it's not just about preparing our homes. It's also about preparing our hearts and our minds for the gift that God has given. It helps us make the most of what's coming as well. So all of the stuff that we do for Christmas helps make that one day very special. Preparing ourselves for uh, a new baby helps us make the most of when that child is ready so that we know all the things we might want to do with them or who we want them to see and who we want to see them as well. So as we prepare for Christmas, it's a time to prepare uh, our hearts and our minds for God to come into us, 
to, to have a relationship with him, to, for him to do amazing things in and through us because of that relationship. And then thirdly, waiting gives us an opportunity to share our hope with others. So I don't know, things like at the doctor's office or in the queues, sometimes I find it a bit awkward when people start talking to me. But actually, that's a really nice thing. It, it's about sharing in the experience that we're going through. It's about sharing hopes, worries, fears. It's about sharing excitement and when we're going on holiday. Where are you off to? I'm off to here, I'm off to there. Uh, at Christmas time, it's a great opportunity for us to share and build relationships to people, with people over the hope that we have in Jesus coming to earth in that celebration of that experience. It's about being able to invite people in to our life and our experience and walk alongside them. So the waiting, the, the period of Advent, it gives us a great opportunity to share our hope with other people. We might be in relationship with God, we might not, that's okay. Um, but it's an opportunity to talk about it. It's an opportunity to have a conversation, to build a relationship around a shared journey and a shared experience. So make the most of this opportunity this year to share your hope in God with other people. And lastly, my fourth point is that hope holds us on course. So we've been thinking about the waiting, but thinking about the hope. Hope holds us on course. Sometimes the waiting feels like it's taking forever. The hope we have of the end result keeps us going. I can't imagine what it must have been like for Abraham and Sarah. 25 years they were having to wait for Isaac. But they'd been given a promise from God. They'd been given a word that he had made a covenant with them, a, a promise that would never break, that they would have a child called Isaac. And I think that must have helped them get through that 25 year period. They must have kept going back to what did God say to me? What did God say to me? What did God say to me? He said this and his promises come true. The hope of something so wonderfully unexpected must have kept them going through it. So as we wait for Christmas this year, as we wait for the celebration of the birth of Jesus coming to earth, let's spend that time waiting, appreciating what and who it is we are celebrating. We're celebrating God coming to earth so that we can have a direct relationship with him. We're celebrating Jesus going to the cross so that we can have our sins forgiven. Let's celebrate the waiting, preparing not just our houses, not just our rooms, not just our presence, but let's spend that time preparing our hearts and minds for God to be in relationship with us, that he can do something amazing in and through us. And let's spend that time waiting uh, to share our hope with other people around us. Our friends, our family, let's invite them into the journey with us. And let our hope uh, in what's to come hold us uh, in the challenges, in the frustrations, in the impatience sometimes, that actually let that hope hold us that what we're hoping for is worth the wait. Amen. Okay, we're going to come on to our time of prayer now. We're going to do things a little bit differently this week. If you've got a watch or a stopwatch, you might want to use that to help you focus. But what we're going to do is we're going to have every 30 seconds, we're going to have a response coming up on screen. Now, you might want to count that on your own stopwatch. You might want to count it on your watch. You might want to count it in your head to see how close you get. Um, but we'll have a count of 30 and then the response will come up on screen. And you can just say that out loud in your own home. You can say it as a family. You can say it as a couple. Um, or you can say it silently as well if you want as well. But it's just a chance to reflect on the, the things that we've thought about in our, our reflection um, and just give those as prayers to God. So the first one will be, Daddy God, thank you for who you are and what you've done. Then Daddy God, thank you for sending Jesus to earth to forgive mistakes and I'm sorry for mine. Then Daddy God, help me to let you in this Christmas beyond all the wonderful decorations and presents. Daddy God, help me to share my hope with those around me. And Daddy God, help me be patient in waiting because you are worth waiting for. So use that time in between to just think, reflect, to be at peace, and then use the words coming up on screen to help just speak out the things that we've thought about this morning in our reflection. Let's pray.
we're going to sing our final song now. Uh, it's a carol. Uh, it came upon a midnight clear. And I'm just going to quickly read the, the last verse of this. It says, And still the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old toward the fullness of the time when comes the age foretold. Then earth and heaven renewed shall see the prince of peace their king and all the world repeat the song which now the angels sing. That verse is speaking to the prophecies of Isaiah and others that were given hundreds of years before Jesus arrived. So Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years uh, for Isaac to arrive. But the Israelites, the, the, the people, the followers of God had to wait over 700 years for Jesus, the one that was promised to arrive. We've got just a few days, a few weeks to wait for Christmas. They had to wait hundreds of years. So as we sing this song, let's remember that actually there's always hope in the midst of the waiting, but the waiting can help us prepare and everything else that we've thought about this morning. So let's sing and worship with It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song Wonderful. Well, we're going to join now together in the words and actions of our creed this week, led by the Druze. And it's a reminder at Christmas time that we're all in this together, that we are uh, all followers of God right around the world, celebrating his birth together, celebrating uh, God's son coming to earth. Um, and that, that second part of it, the, the one that we believe, we believe in, Jesus Christ, God's son. That's, that's what we're celebrating at Christmas, that he came to earth for us. So let's join in with these words and actions that unite us all across the world as Christians, led by the Druze. I believe and trust in God the Father, who makes all creation and life, who made us and loves us. I believe and trust in God the Son, 
Jesus Christ, who became human like us, died for us and rose again. I believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives help to the people of God and makes Jesus known in the world. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for our service this morning. I hope it's uh, encouraged you. I hope it's helped you think about actually what this time of waiting for Christmas can be used for, that it might inspire you to uh, share your journey of hope with other people. And it might help us prepare ourselves for, for what we celebrate on Christmas Day. Uh, I hope and pray that you have a fantastic week as well. As we go from our service this morning, may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Have a fantastic week this week. Uh, we've got our live service coming up at 10 o'clock, um, our traditional service. We've got um, on uh, our booking now, we're going to have a scavenger nativity on Zoom on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve at 3 p.m., where we're going to be using everything that you've got in your house to be the characters of the nativity story. So check out the Eventbrite uh, link booking to, uh, below so you can book your place for that. Um, it is only for those who register, so it won't be something that you can just join in with um, just so that we can make sure everyone who's there is safe. Um, so please do check out the link there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be pretty crazy as you search your house high and low for anything that you can find to be the characters. Of course, we've got our parent and toddler session uh, coming on Tuesday as well. And we'll be back next Sunday for more of the one service as Eileen helps us with our reflection. So have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Bye.